um, going through Wikipedia, there's a link hopping. Um, yeah, that's something I used to do back when I was in middle school, and I actually kind of found it fun um, as I'm an adult, and I like things that are based on war and occult stuff. We're probably going to do a dive into war and occult stuff, so if that isn't your thing, it's perfectly fine. Click off the video if it, you know, if it makes you uncomfortable. Uh, this should actually be pretty short because, um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how much I can feasibly uh, link hop and horror without coming across something that you two may not like. Uh, I'm going to start it off and I'm going to type the word cult. Very simple, just cult. And I'm just going to read a bit. Um, I hope you guys like reading sounds or reading, period. So, anyway, um, cult is a term for a relatively small group which typically is led by a charismatic and self appointed leader who excessively controls its members, requiring unwavering devotion to a set of beliefs and practices which are considered deviant. or a social deviance explores the actions and or behaviors that violate social norms across formerly enacted rules, for example, crime, as well as informal violations of social norms, for example, rejecting folk ways and mores. What are mores? Or maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, mores. Mores, mores. I've actually never seen this word used like this. So if I'm pronouncing it wrong, you know, I'm a dumbass, but hey. Um, mores slash mores, because I don't know. Plural for singular, mores, meaning manner, custom, uh, manner, custom, usage, or habit are social norms that are widely observed within a particular society or culture. Mores determine what is considered morally acceptable or unacceptable acceptable within any given culture. A folk way, which is what we saw last page, is what is created through interaction in that process is what organizes interactions through routine, repetition, habit, and consistency. I find that kind of interesting. Okay, I know that if I were to click on any of these links over here, I, it's over for me. So I'm going to go to this guy, William Graham Sumner. William Graham Sumner, born October 30th, 1840, and passed April 12th, 1910, is a English clergyman, clergyman, uh, social scientist, and classical liberal. He taught social sciences at Yale University, where he held the nation's first profession. Oh, sorry nation's first uh, professorship in sociology and became one of the most influential teachers at any other major school. Sumner wrote extensively on the social sciences, penning numerous books and essays on ethics, American history, economic history, political theory, sociology, and anthropology. He supported this for a type of economic system which transactions between private groups of people are free from any form of economic interventionism. Uh, whatever that is, um, less for economics. I hope I'm saying that right. 
free economics and the gold standard in addition to coining the term uh, ethnocentrism for some reason when I said that word it sounded wrong ethnocentrism I don't know to identify the roots of imperialism which are strong which he strongly opposed as a spokesman against elitism he is, was in favor of the forgotten man of the middle class a term he coined he had prolonged influence in america conservatism okay where should we go here i actually want to know more about this and figure out if i uh, said something wrong uh, hopefully my, hopefully this isn't too loud. Let's play the, laissez frere, my bad guys, laissez frere, laissez frere, oh I read this already, as a system of thought, laissez frere, rest on the following, uh, axioms. The individual is the basic unit of society. For example, uh, the standard of measurement in social calculus. The individual is a, has a natural right to freedom and the physical order of nature is a harmonious and self-regulating system. Another basic principle, a laissez-faire, holds that markets should be market should normally be competitive a rule that the early advocates of laissez-faire always emphasized with the aims of the maximizing freedom with the aims of maximizing freedom by allowing markets of to self-regulate early advocates of laissez-faire proposed a input unique uh, a tax of land rent similar to Georgism to replace all taxes as they saw as damaging welfare by penalizing production. That's kind of interesting. Um, especially this word that I butchered that I'm sure I butchered. But essentially it seems that um, they had this idea of taxing land to replace um you know, all forms of taxes that would be, um, uh, that they saw as damaging welfare. That's, uh, pretty interesting. I kind of want to go back to something a bit more me, but it looks like I'm getting thrown into, uh, economic topics. So we are going to hop. I'm going to force a hop and see where we can go. Uh, what word would get us back to something pertaining to, let's try competitive. Um, oh, we're gonna, surely there's something.